All right, welcome to our artist interviews with uh, several of the artists from the Botanical Art Collective of North Texas summer show here at the Botanical Research Institute of Texas. My name is Erin Starwhite. I'm the curator of the Madeline St. Paul's Exhibit Hall here at BRIT. And I had the pleasure this summer of uh, jurying the exhibition for the Botanical Art Collective. There were some hard choices to be made. One of those choices first was choosing which artists. There were so many good submissions. The second was having the show online. As many people, um, as everyone is dealing with, with the pandemic, we're all finding new ways of doing things. And it was never a choice for us to cancel the exhibition. We just needed to reimagine what it could look like. And so while um, I am sad that the works of art in the exhibition are not uh, in our gallery. Looking at art is so important, uh, especially in person. I feel that it is um, it is a good experience still to look at the exhibition online. So I invite you to do that. I imagine if you're looking at this video, you have already looked at the online exhibition. So what we're doing is interviewing several of the artists uh, whose work is in the show. I want to start with uh, Lotus McElfish. And I have a few questions. Lotus is here with us today. Um, and Lotus, thank you for joining us. We're very thank you. I'm honored. Yeah, and Lotus and I were chatting before we started, and she is from Texas Hill Country. So, um, you know, I'm up in North Texas. You've got a little bit different typography, a lot of the same plants. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so I think some. I think that um, I was very taken with Lotus's work. Uh, it's very delicate, very beautiful. And so I wanted to ask you, Lotus, what brought you to botanical art? Well, I have kind of a, a change of life story <laughs> with that in my late 50s. And I can't believe that it's, well, it's almost 15 years now that <clears throat> my husband and I, we decided to do a whole different life change, our occupation, our location. And we did this road trip back east to figure out our location, trying to find an artsy community, something that we might enjoy. We'd lived in Colorado and California, and it was just getting too um, beyond our means. So in this road trip, you know, you have a lot of time in the car. <laughs> And we were trying to figure out what we really wanted to do. And I said, well, let's kind of figure out what our passion is because people say, oh, you need to do your passion in your life. And so then things aren't work. So I started to articulate what my passion was. And it was like taking hikes, it was learning the healing of herbs. It was foraging plants to make wreaths while my husband was fishing. Uh, when we had the hot springs business, I got into aromatherapy. So I started articulating all this and I realized it was everything botanical. And I wanted to get back into my art. I'm, I wasn't trained then and I just blurted out, I want to be a botanical artist. And that's how it started. Oh. <laughs> and then ever since then, I've been um, learning. I didn't know watercolors, so I had to learn that. It was a huge learning curve. And then moving to Texas, I didn't know the plants, but I just gradually, and I'm still learning. So that's my beginning. Wonderful. I like that story a lot. Uh, it's kind of like choose your own adventure. Yeah. <laughs> and to not look back and get a job, you know. So yeah. I just really forged forward and, and we make our living with art festivals and everything. So okay. that's what we, my husband's a word worker. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. What a, what a team you guys are. I know. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Well, my next question uh, and and I immediately want to talk about watercolor because I myself um, am getting into watercolor and I've always oh, been yeah. intimidated by it. Oils and, and acrylic and all that is fine, but watercolors always kind of uh -huh. scared me, but it's really wonderful. And I'm wondering if you could describe your process to us. I know that you use all sorts of different media. 
Um, right. Right. Um, well, I thought, first of all, I would just show my entry. Each of my entries, I have three of them, have a different process. And so I can kind of go through that. And That'd then be great. do the watercolor. Thank you. Excellent. So on this one, the nature walk, this was during a hike in Dillon, Colorado. And don't we wish we were all there right now. In the summer, we would go to Colorado to do the art festivals because it's so hot in Texas. And we do the other ones throughout the other year here. And I have family there. I'm a native there. And so I just love hiking in the mountains. And this was near Dillon and it was around a lake and it caught my eye because it was just this vibrant color coming out from, from, the, um, um, from the ground and all of the debris was all around it and it was all brown and everything. So knowing that I couldn't do the, the, um, the painting there, I brought home specimens little pine cones and needles and, and um, a few of the leaves and a photo. I usually don't work from photos, but this one I did because it just captured my heart. So I brought it home and, and did it that way. And it is watercolor pencil I used for the Oregon grape. And then the surround is ink. And I don't work a lot in ink. Sometimes it's just outlines. But this one I did stippling, and if you know stippling, you, you do a little dot, 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 dot. And so it's, it's very zen-like, very, very um, uh, tedious, but it was like a puzzle, and I just really enjoyed it. So that was just a, a different thing for me. Then on the um, Autumn Sage, Mm -hmm. Can you see it there? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, beautiful. <clears throat> this was commissioned um, by the Earth Society of America. Mm -hmm. And it was for their, I think it was their 85th issue. And they were, the herb of the month was sage. So they wanted a sage. And I thought of the autumn sage, which is one of our natives. And right. being Herb Society of America, it could be anything all over the world, but I wanted something that was from Texas. Mm -hmm. And so my process with that, and pretty much what I do with all of my artwork when it's purely botanical, is that I do a little collection um, form. I found this when you, pick plants and you, you know, you record where you found it and everything. So mm -hmm. that's what I do with most of my plants. And I research a lot with, okay. um, so that I have a lot. It's kind of like you fall in love with a specimen and then you want to know everything about it. Mm -hmm. And I'll look up different things, you know, like what are the plant parts? So as a botanical artist, I want to make sure that I have things correctly. I observe right. a lot and I have a live plant. With this one, I bought a plant and had it right in my studio so I could record and do a lots of different studies on it. Then for this one, because it was a cover, I did different compositions. So with the specifications that they wanted. Right. And then I, I chose, chose that one. So that's a little of that process. And then I do studies. So I wanted this to be larger than life size. And I don't usually do that. I usually <laughs> do things at, like, at the size. And so I did different studies of it. And then the color, oops, can you see? The color. Right, all your samples, yeah. Yeah. So you're, it sounds um, like your process is very in depth and it is. Um, yeah. And it takes a long time. That's great and though. So then the composition 
And on this, I just did a, a bit of a tonal, a quick mm -hmm. tonal on it, not in depth. And I sent this to them via email just to see if I was on the right track, if it's what they wanted, because I wasn't going to develop this and right. have to start all over again. And they loved it. And they said, we like it black and white. And wow. I went because okay. I had kind of been in color, <laughs> but I really didn't have a lot of time because I was going to go on this trip. Yeah. And so I was, I was like ecstatic because I love graphite. And mm -hmm. if it sold better, then I would do more of it. But um, yeah. so my process with the graphite is if you see all these different pencils, I take it from 6H mm -hmm. all the way to 8B. So yes. these are all different grades of tonal quality for your um, drawing. And so it's not just, you know, making something really dark. You, you just build it up and build it up and build it up. Mm -hmm. and, and Lotus, do you do any kind of, oh, beautiful. What? That's beautiful. Do you do any kind of spray fixative once you're done over the? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. I do very carefully. You have to really hold yeah. it way back and, and make sure you're not <laughs> doing glows on it. Yeah. It depends. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. I, yeah, look at that, that, the image of that piece. Uh, I wondered what color the original uh, sage was. It looks like it was red. It was red. Yeah. Okay. Bright red. And I, that it was quite a challenge because when I was working with the different colors with the watercolor, how to get that vibrancy and oh, yeah. how to get right the, the right tonal. Because mm -hmm. what I do with watercolor is that it's usually in glazes. So it's it's um I don't mix a lot of colors. So the color from underneath, you put a glaze on top and on top, and the color underneath starts to radiate through and creates the green or it creates the, the color that you want. So with the red, instead of just having it one tube red, it was kind of hard to, to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, my next question, oh, you have one more, don't you? I do. Yeah, I we need the pecan. <laughs> We're in Texas, we need a pecan. <laughs> I know. Well, with the pecan, um, let me see if I can do the... Well, anyway, um, with the pun, I we were in Johnson City with um, my husband and I, and it was in the fall, and I went over to the courthouse to see if I could pick some pecans, because usually you can find a whole bunch of pecans on the ground and you can gather some things. And as I was doing that, I looked up and I saw this one specimen and I went, oh my gosh, <laughs> I, it was love at first sight. It was like, I've got to have this. And it was a little high for me. So I told my husband, I, I would really like that. Can you reach that? And what he did is he cupped his hands and lifted me up oh. and I got the, got this, the twig with um, the ripening um, pecan on it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I brought that specimen home, and I have a thingamajig here that I clicked to the table. And so I just clicked the stem right right there. And yeah, so perfect. it was just, just, you know, like right in my eyes as I was doing everything. And again, I guess my process is I research it, do the study, this one I did really quickly. I didn't do a real involved study because they're big tonal. I did a really quick tonal one so that I had record of the, the lights and the dark. So I, I mm -hmm. captured that in my um, painting. And I just didn't want the specimen to die on me. So I, I worked quite quickly and this was the painting. So here's our wow. state, state tree. Yeah. I have to ask because people love to ask this question. Share for, for viewers. How long, when you say you worked quickly, about how long did it take you to complete that? Uh, 
Um, it takes a lifetime. No, <laughs> it takes weeks. <laughs> it takes weeks. It yeah. depends on the specimen. Like the one I was going to talk to about the native plants that I do mm -hmm. and the rare and endangered. And this one I just finished, the wine cup. Now this okay. one took like two years because um, I did do an involved study. It was a plant on my, on my um, property, but whenever I started to really paint it, something else would come through or a commission or I have to do an art festival and I put it back in the drawer and I put it back in the drawer. And this year during the COVID, I finally finished it. So I'm really happy with that. It's, oh, it, uh, it's quite an accomplishment. So with those, I do it mostly out in the field. Okay. I do a lot of the sketching there. And especially with the rare and endangered plants, you have to um, usually be escorted by somebody because you have to find the habitat for it. And um, so you, you're just sitting there all day with that plant and making recordings and of pencil and color studies and and like I say I I usually research the plant a little bit before I go because then I know what I'm looking for right. and um, you just have to plot on so it's hard to answer that question because each one's a little different oh yeah they all it sounds like you have a different relationship with each plant and with each piece yeah I do <laughs> yeah well, you, I had two other questions, but you've answered them already. Um, kind of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the last thing I'll ask is, is there a special story behind one of the pieces? And you said, you told the story of your husband lifting you up to get the baton. Um, right, right. Yeah. I think I kind of covered the stories on, on each one of them. Okay. Um, I think the only... <clears throat> Uh, let's see, what was what, there was one other question I thought. Uh, what is your relationship to plants and nature? Oh, yeah, right. I think what I wanted to uh, just bring out that is just sort of immense, it's just part of me. And um, when we first bought our property, it was 15 years ago, it was totally burned out, only the oaks on it left. And I think that's what got me thinking about the conservation of plants and how we were just kind of raping the land instead of letting some of the natural plants grow. So we live on a hillside and there was no way I was gonna put lawn up or my husband either. Um, so we just let the land be and started to restore it. And this birthday I recorded like almost 30 new trees, shrubs, and vines that just oh. are on our property that wasn't there before. We didn't plant them. And I think that's something that um, I love using my art as conservation. And, um, and that kind of started with a grant that I had from the American Society of Botanical Artists. And one of the stipulations for getting the grant was educating people and then give back to the organization mm -hmm. that um, sponsored me. And so I was, through those beginning years, I just developed such a deep love for using my art for conservation and, and hoping that people will see, see the plants more and protect them. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, I, Sarah. This yeah, is brilliant. You, thank you uh, for participating. Um, yeah, this idea of plant blindness that people, you know, there's plants yes. constantly. We can't live without them, but people don't notice them. So that's, that's part, of, part of our mission here at Brit is, uh, and the Fort Worth Botanic Garden, uh, is that, um, yeah, we kind of, wake people up to see what's around them and to hopefully mm -hmm. it and then take care of it. Uh, it's really, really important. So I'm really glad that, um, that you've shared what you have. I will say, um, I don't recall if I said it at the beginning, so I'll say it now. This online exhibition of the Botanical Art Collective of North Texas 
work uh, is online through August 21st. So it went up June 19th and then you've got about two months to enjoy it. And I really hope that if you haven't already gone online to see the exhibition, you do. Uh, it's grit.org. Um, and then you can find the exhibition tab. Um, and there you go. So I think it's time to sign off. Lotus, thank you so much. And it was wonderful to see a, a bit of your studio and your process. I think that's always really interesting to find out how. Yeah. Works. And if you want to see more, I'm on Instagram. Lotus what is your handle on Miguel Instagram? Lotus underscore Miguel Fish. And okay, Lotus um, Miguel I do Fish. videos on that and I work, you know, the work in progress and kind of see what's on my art table today. So I do a lot with that. Wonderful. And so for those of you watching, it's Lotus, L-O-T-U-S underscore M-C-E-L-F-I-S-H, correct? Yep. Okay, Correct. you have the best name, by the way. <laughs> oh, thanks. I also yeah. have a blog that I've done on the endangered plants. And what and is your blog? That's, that's in the link. It's um, endangered and not so much. <laughs> so I cover a lot of um, things with the endangered plants. And then I also honor other artists in some of the blogs that are using their art for conservation as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you. This is very informative and delightful. Thank um, you, Erin. And hopefully next year we'll be able to do this in person. 